right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to watch this session from the 2020 Dev Summit, ArcGIS API for JavaScript, using Arcade with your apps. My name is Christian Ekinis. I am joined by Mohan, uh, is it Balumuri? Is that yes. You, yes. <laughs> um, we both work on the ArcGIS API for JavaScript team. Um, I work on also with the integration of Arcade into the JavaScript API. Mohan works on our smart mapping APIs and our uh, renderers. So he's um, is required to be a little familiar with Arcade as well. So he's um, we're happy to have him join as well. Um, this is a obviously a virtual event. We're sorry we couldn't uh, be there in person to uh, field your questions um, and and talk about your use cases. But um, we're still excited to talk about Arcade with the JavaScript API and hope that you find this video useful. And um, by the end of the session, we'll remind you of this as well, that um, if you have questions, use cases, um, requests, to please reach out to us. We're available on Twitter and GeoNet, and uh, we'll point you to those resources at the end. That being said, let's go ahead and get started to talk about Arcade. I um, uh, just want to let you know what you can expect to see, or Mohan will start off with a little bit of an overview of Arcade and show you an example of what it's all about. Um, and then we're going to take a deeper dive into what Arcade is and how it's used in the JavaScript API and what you can do to take your apps to the next level when working with Arcade. Instead of just um, educating users about how they can write their own expressions, you can go a step further and generate expressions for them in your apps. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Mohan, who will talk about the purpose of Arcade. So uh, sometimes you might have a data set or a service that is a little different than what you might intend to use. So this is where Arcade is useful. Arcade is a simple expression language that allows you to add an extra bit of logic to make your maps more dynamic. That extra bit of logic can be used to make uh, your uh, render uh, symbols render differently or uh, how uh, change how a label is re uh, displayed on your map. So uh, Arcade is uh, absolutely not a full-scale programming language or a scripting language. Uh, it is never intended to replace uh, languages like Python or JavaScript. Uh, its goal is to be uh, simple, lightweight, secure, and be portable. Uh, you can think of Arcade as a simple cell calculation in an Excel spreadsheet, or you can also think of it as a simple calculator that takes inputs, uh, evaluates it, and gives you the output. So uh, I'll, I'll give you a, a small overview of how uh, Arcade is useful in this uh, test app. So, on your first glance, it is not very clear uh, what this map is trying to tell you. Uh, actually, it's using a weather station service uh, to display the uh, air temperature values as labels in this map. To uh, make this map more readable, you might want to round these uh, values and append the Fahrenheit unit since the raw data values are in Fahrenheit. Uh, maybe you can do this on the server side, uh, but you might not want to do that because of some network overhead or you don't have right access to the service. This is where Arcade is useful as you can do all of this on the client side. So uh, in this test app, like uh, in, in the labeling class, uh, the label expression just displays a raw data value. Let's disable that and let's use label expression info where you can use the arcade expression uh, to uh, do the dynamic stuff. So, uh, so first we get the raw data value uh, and use the arcade's round method to round the data value and append the Fahrenheit unit to that value. You might be wondering what this dollar feature is. Dollar feature is a global variable in arcade that allows you to access the fields of a feature in a given layer. So let's save this and reload the app. And you can see all the uh, labels are now in Fahrenheit uh, values with a Fahrenheit unit appended at the end. So in certain parts of the world, uh, you might want to view these values in Celsius, Celsius rather than in Fahrenheit. Again, you can use Arcade to do that. So I'll, I'll disable this expression and I already have an Arcade expression that does the uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius conversion, which rounds it using Arcade's round function and appends a Celsius unit at the end. Now let's reload the app. 
and now you can see all the data values are now in Celsius. So initially uh, we have a data set that is little different than what we intended to use. So using Arcade, we added an extra bit of uh, functionality to make your make your map look more dynamic. Over to you, Christian. All right, thanks, Mohan. That's awesome that um, you can use Arcade to um, basically dynamically calculate a new value. I think a lot of GIS users, you're familiar with um, creating new fields and you know maybe your feature class or feature service and and creating a new uh, a data field that way. But if you don't have access to the layer or the, right, like Mohan said, write capabilities, this is a very powerful way you can do that on the client without having to worry about that. Um, and also for something like um, temperature or weather, you know that's updating frequently, then um, that's not really an option. You don't really want to write new values every time. So it's cool to, that we can do that with Arcade. Well, probably the number one question we get when it comes to uh, Arcade is, why in the world would Esri spend all that time and those resources in developing a new language when there are so many other languages out there that you could probably use for evaluating and calculating values? And that's a valid question. And it's certainly not one that we took lightly. We certainly considered um, alternatives, but to give you uh, an idea of why we decided to um, write or create our own scripting language, um, let's give you an overview over what the purpose of Arcade is. So Mohan already touched on this, but basically Arcade is intended to be executed client side and it should be run using the same syntax in a variety of devices all over the ArcGIS platform. So you can write Arcade expressions for mobile, desktop, and of course in the browser. And we want to be able to have the same syntax evaluate the same way in each of those environments and have that expression persist so that when you author a web map that um, calculates the value client side, you want to be able to have it render and display those values the exact same way in all those clients. Um, and that of course presents a number of challenges. Um, and with each environment, there's specific um, um, challenges that are more prominent than others. So for example, in mobile and native apps, the size of the executable becomes a huge concern. You want to have the smallest size possible. And of course, you know, native access and security become issues there. And when it comes to um, the browser, you have very similar um, concerns. You know, you don't you want to have a very secure language, so to prevent cross-site scripting, um, you want to have a small download size, and 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 you know we don't have binaries as well. And then, you know, so we look at traditional development and, and scripting languages to address those challenges, such as Python and JavaScript, and those were just not good. Um, alternatives here because of you know the size of Python that can be that can be a very large library. JavaScript um, you can introduce all sorts of security vulnerabilities there. So to, when you know attempting to persist a JavaScript um, expression or um, function, it's just not not a good idea. And so that being said, we set out to um, we defined these very clear goals. Number one is that it has to arcade expressions need to be portable. You write the expression in Pro, it should run in the browser or on a native device um, exactly the same way. Um, it needs to be secure. We don't want to compromise the security of your apps. And it should be lightweight so that um, it can be small and run fast in whatever environment, whatever device. Um, but this last goal here is extremely important, especially for a mapping company such as Esri. And that's that we want to make uh, geospatial functions first-class members of the language. Something that you don't necessarily get in these other um, languages, right? So, um, and you'll see examples of what, what we mean by that. Basically, we want to provide a library of geometry functions to allow you to do spatial queries and, and intersections and working with the geometry of, of your data. So that being said, now we addressed why we have Arcade and um, some of the things that are important for, for doing it. And so we set out to uh, write the language. And I'm going to go ahead and hand it back over to Mohan, where, who will discuss some of the overview uh, functions, the 
the globals, all the, the syntax that you have available to you with Arcade. So, Mohan? So, uh, I, I'll switch it to uh, okay. the playground. So, the playground uh, allows you to write your own Arcade expressions and see how they are being calculated. So, uh, let's start by writing a simple expression like Hello Avengers. And if I click the test button, you'd be able to see the result over here along with its type. You can also do mathematical expressions like 20 into 100 plus 20 gives you 2020 with type number. So one of the primary constructs of Arcade is the concept of implicit returns. So uh, for single line expressions like these, uh, the result of this uh, uh, expression is re returned as a value of the script. So you can also explicitly specify return and it would still return the same value. Now for multi-line expressions, the value of the last result of the last statement would be uh, written as the result of the script. So uh, you, ca you can also do uh, variable declarations in Arcade. Let's declare a variable like where using the var keyword, uh, where a equal to 10, declare another variable like where b equal to 20, and let's do a plus b. Since this is a multi-line expression, the value of the last statement would be returned as a result of the script. So one second to test, and you can see the result as 30. You can also do uh, reassign variables in Arcade, like uh, I can reassign a variable a to maybe 30. And if I run test again, you can see that the value is 50 now. You can also reassign uh, the variable with a different type. So for example, if I reassign the variable a with a string like hello, and if I do test, it would uh, display a string hello 20. So what Arcade does is it implicitly typecasts variable B to a string uh, and, and then appends it to the variable A. Now, uh, you can also do comments in Arcade. Uh, just like in JavaScript, you can uh, use two forward slashes to comment a sing uh, to, a, to do a single line comment. And to do a multi-line comment, you can do a forward slash asterisk followed by uh, asterisk and forward slash to end it. Now, uh, you can also uh, write your own functions in Arcade. Uh, let's write a simple function like function say hi. And it takes in a parameter, let's say person A. And let that person A says hi. So since this is the last statement in this function, it is implicitly returned as the value of this function call. Now let's call this function, say hi, and let that person A be Thanos. And if you do test, you can say that Thanos says hi. Maybe I should give a space over here, and you can clearly see Thanos says hi. Now uh, Arcade also supports uh, flow control statements like if else. Uh, let's uh, demonstrate uh, that if else by using by adding one more parameter like percent b and if that person b is equal to hulk then person a says hi else if that person b is thor then person A says, let's say, bye. <laughs> so now let's call this function with uh, person A as Thanos and person B as Thor. Now we can see Thanos says bye for Thor. And if it is, if person B is Hulk, then you can see that Thanos says hi. So uh, now uh, Arcade is a uh, uh, case insensitive that means like uh, you can uh, mix the casing of variable names and function uh, names and it would still return the value let's uh, change this say, uh, say hi Let, let's mix the casing for say hi so let's do say hi and if I do it would still work let's test this again 
so yes you can see that uh, it's working with uh, mixed casing variables functions so uh, next is like Arcade, uh, Arcade has full type system support, so you can have uh, different, uh, Arcade supports different types like numbers, text, arrays, booleans, and all, Arcade also supports GI specific types like features, points, polylines, etc. You can find more about these uh, type system in this uh, guide page in the type system section. Now, Arcade also supports for loops. Uh, let's write a simple for loop that adds number numbers from 1 to 10. Let's declare a variable variable result equal to 0 and let's write a for loop for where index equal to 1 like the number equal to 1 the number less than or equal to 10 number plus plus and let's add that number to the result r plus i and let's return the result and you can see the sum of numbers 1 to 10 is 55 uh, arcade also uh, supports some so some shorthand notations like plus equals like in javascript so r plus equals i is same as r equals r plus i and if i do test it would still work Now, Arcade also supports uh, foreign loops, which allows you to loop through arrays and objects. So let's create a sample array like uh, array equals 1, 2, 3. And let's write, the, let's, let's write a foreign loop for where index in array and r equals r plus array of index and it should return the sum of uh, all the numbers in this particular array which should be six yes now arcade has a rich set of uh, functions that you can use to make your maps more exciting uh, let's take a simple function like date and see how it works so let's take this date function and pass in the year like 2012 December 12th so um, the months uh, in arcades date starts with zero index so the index for month December is 11 and if I do test you can see that the date is 12th December 2012 arcade all we can also do uh, date calculations in arcade using the date add method uh, so if I want to find um, a date 10 days from now so let's pass in the current date and the number to add and i want the uh, date to be uh, the numbers to add in days so if i do test you can see that date the date from 10 days from now is 26 march 2020 and if i want to find uh, the date 10 days earlier from now i just need to do minus 10 and it it will show you the date as 6th march 2020 you can also do uh, age calculations in arcade uh, by using date diff method so if i want to find my uh, age uh, pass in the current date and now create a date with my date of birth so let's say it's 1989 january 1st and let the age units be in years since it's age so i am 31 years old now so if I want to calculate my age in seconds, just pass in seconds as a unit, and you can see that my age is 984 something. Let's format this properly uh, using the text function in Arcade. Let's wrap it inside the text function and add a call a use a formatter there. And now you can clearly see that I am 984 million seconds old. So uh now, Arcade, uh, this playground app has a uh, some uh, additional functionality like uh, you can use the mock feature uh, available in here so that uh, you can test your expressions, uh, Arcade expressions using these mock features. 
so this uh, this particular mock feature has two fields like name one and name two uh, you can edit these uh, field values to whatever you want to test with so uh, let's uh, test uh, our arcade expression which we used in the test in our test app earlier let's use this arcade expression since we are uh, checking the temperature uh, testing temperature values uh, let's uh, set the value for the field name one be 74.444 or something and first let, let's check if uh, we are getting this value correctly and you can see uh, i'm getting the uh, exact value that i have specified it for the name one field now let's use the arcade expression that we used earlier so just uh, remember to uh, change the field name from your field name to the uh, mock field mock features field name like name one and if you do test it should round this value and up in the fahrenheit unit boom yes uh, you can see that uh, the temperature value is now uh, rounded and fahrenheit unit is appended so uh, one of the uh, most important uh, uh, variables in arcade is this dollar feature global variable uh, but there are a certain uh, set of globals for uh, only for a uh, specific profile so you have these uh, profiles over here uh, so if, you, if i take a labeling profile uh, functions like attachments feature sets are not available for this profile uh, Christian will be uh, talking about uh, talking more about these profiles in the coming slides. Over to you, Christian. All right, awesome. Thank you, Mohan. Um, that was a great overview of the syntax and the functions that you have available to you. And um, before I jump into profiles, I just want to touch on a concept that's it's not I wouldn't call it new anymore, but it's one of the newer features in Arcade, and that's the idea of feature sets. One of the uh, uh, feedbacks or enhancement requests we've gotten most frequently is the ability to not only to go beyond just accessing the attributes of your feature but to access the attributes of other features within your layer or even in your map and so that's where feature sets come in um, those feature set functions that that Mohan showed over here such as feature set by ID and name and portal item those allow you to get features from other layers in your map so if you take a look at this snippet right here, um, I, uh, with, if I'm working in a pop-up, I have a layer called public lands, and I want to see the, um, the number of sensitive areas that are classified as sensitive in the public lands layer. And so the way that I could access that is using these features of functions. So first, I, I want to create a reference to that layer. And that's what's, what is critical to understand here is that when you create a feature set, you've not actually queried any data yet. Um, so when I say public land features are feature set by name, dollar map, this dollar map global, that's simply a collection of the layers in the map. And then you pass in the title of the layer, in this case, public lands. And I'm gonna pass in these other parameters to restrict my query. So, I only want to inspect the class field and I want to return the geometry. And so in the second line, sensitive areas, I'm going to call create a filter and filter it based on only the ones that are sensitive. And that is where, um, so that is basically when the query is going to start happening as I, I, I create a, a reference to the, to the features in the layer and then I perform a geometry operation. I want to find all of the sensitive areas that intersect my feature. So when this query executes, it's going to do a, a query for those features and then give me the count of that feature. So um, you can see that this is a chainable operation as well. I can pass in um, a feature set and that will in turn return a feature set and so I can chain functions such as count intersects and filter all within the same uh, line of code even. But I've broken up into multiple lines to make it more readable. So um, just to kind of wrap up on feature sets, they represent a connection of features to a service or to features in memory. Once you've made a query to features in, from a service, you begin working with in-memory features.
Okay, so Mohan touched a little bit on profiles in the arcade playground. So let's take a deeper dive into profiles. These are perhaps, or this concept of arcade is perhaps the most misunderstood and it's often the hardest to explain. Um, but you can think about profiles, if you look at that line at the bottom of the slide, is what they do is they define the purpose, the rules, and the context for executing arcade expressions. I think a lot of people just think about it as context only, but it goes beyond that. It, it really helps define rules. So in arcade, we have a number of profiles now. This slide doesn't even cover all of them, but it covers the majority of them. You have attribute rules, geoanalytics, field mapping that are covered in ArcGIS Pro and Enterprise, but in um, the JavaScript API, you have six profiles that you're primarily concerned with, and that's pop-up, visualization, feature Z, labeling, field calculate, and constraint. And we actually document all of these profiles in the documentation as, as Mohan showed you. So if you go to developers.arcgis.com slash arcade, you can come to the home page and then you click on the guide and then there's the profiles uh, page here. And this page will list all of the supported profiles and then it will define the rules. And I'll go through what, what those rules are. And so when it comes to using arcade in the JavaScript API, um, it's used in both 3x and 4x. Um, we have an arcade interpreter um, that's inside the JavaScript API. So there's various implementations. We have a, a C++ implementation, a Java implementation, and a JavaScript of arcade. And so obviously the JavaScript API is, is using that JavaScript implementation. And, um, and that's where um, we implement profiles that make sense. So here are the things that the profile defines. There's the context, and then it's the rules. And that's which global variables or, or inputs do we have available to us? What, is, what are valid return types? And what are the functions that are allowed or perhaps banned from being used in a profile? So if we take a look at visualization first, um, the context is our renderers and our visual variables. So that is where you will look to the documentation to um, implement Arcade and the visualization profile. Globals, you have access to all the attributes in your feature as well as the view scale. So if you want to accomplish a visualization for changing the size of points or lines by scale, you can take advantage of that view scale variable to do so. But the most common thing by far is to just reference an attribute value and then maybe do something else to, to it to create a calculation. Then um, the only types of return, uh, the only the expressions must return either a text or a number. And that really depends on, again, the context. So the unique value renderer expects a text uh, value to be returned, and everything else will expect a number. Class breaks, renderer, the dot density renderer expects a number, and all the visual variables. And then you can't, you're banned from using any of the feature set functions that me and Mohan just described. And that's because those um, will query the service and that happens for every single feature. So if you're rendering a layer, say of 50,000 polygons, you do not wanna be executing 50,000 plus queries just to render your layer. That's not gonna be efficient. It's gonna crash your app. You'll have a terrible user experience. So we explicitly ban the use of those functions in visualization. We only wanna use what's already on the client. Then there's the pop-up profile. This one, you do have a lot more capabilities. The context is within the pop-up template, and then you have more globals. Not only do you have the feature attributes, but you also have dollar layer. That's a, that's a reference to the other features in the same layer that the feature executing the arcade um, is a part of. Then you have dollar map, that's a, basically a collection of the layers within the map, and then dollar data store, which refers to a collection of the layers within your service. Um, Pop-up uh, similarly uh, expects either a text or a number, and then you don't have any ban on the functions available. You can use any function available in Arcade within the pop-up because um, the pop-up only executes one, uh, basically on, on mouse click, right? So. If once you click a feature, opens a pop-up, executes the arcade, you're not gonna run into that issue of having to execute it for 50,000 features at once. Um, labeling is very similar to visualization. 
in that you have band set of feature set functions. Um, in this case, because we're dealing with text, you're only allowed to return text um, values in the expression. And they're, the only global available is the dollar feature global. And then feature Z, this is only for use in our scene view or our 3D um, side of the API. And that's basically um, a profile that allows you to calculate a Z value for your features when you don't have it in your geometry. Ideally, you store Z values in the Z property of your geometry, um, whether it's a point or a path or, or a polygon. But a lot of cases, our data sources are originated from a 2D source. And you know if you have a height attribute or some kind of attribute that indicates a Z value, you can use Arcade to pull that value out and use that on the rendering side to uh, render the features in their actual true locations in Z space. And I'll show an example of this. So of course, that will only expect a number. And um, we don't allow you to use feature set functions there. The constraint profile is relatively new in the API. It comes with the feature form widget. And the difference here is that you are you have to return a Boolean value. So it's a conditional profile that um, when you're doing an, setting up an editing experience for your users and you want to only display certain questions or fields based on the response in a different field, you can write an arcade expression that will um, set up those conditions for you or control them. And then finally, there's the field calculate profile. This is only in implemented in 3x at the moment, but it's very similar to pop up in the restrictions. You have access to your other features inside your service, and you can return text number or date, and you don't have any ban on the functions because this will be running on the service, the server side. Um, all right, so here are a few snippets. Before we dive into some full on examples, I just want to show briefly what this looks like in, in code. So um, in the JavaScript API, it expects the arcade expressions as literal strings. So um, in this particular case, the class breaks renderer, I'm going to pass in a value expression that will normalize the total number of voters based on the um, or normalize it by the registered voters and multiply it by 100, just so I can get a nice percentage of voter turnout for a particular election. And the um, interpreter executes the uh, value expression for every feature in this particular case. Um, the labeling uh, profile, this is one case where you don't see the value expression keyword in our API or the property name. We just pass it in the expression of the label expression info. Mohan already showed this as original demo. You just pass in that expression there and it will evaluate for every feature. But then there's cases when you have much longer expressions. So Mohan again showed uh, multi-line expressions with if-else statements, custom functions that you write yourself. A lot of that gets uh, hard to write within the JavaScript app itself, especially if you're supporting browsers that don't allow you to use uh, string templates, literals, and things of that nature that would allow you to use um, multi-line strings. So you can actually um, write your expression in a separate script tag and um, and then reference that by its ID within your JavaScript. And that makes it a lot more readable. It makes your JavaScript a little cleaner. And again, I'll show some examples of that in just a second. Um, the important thing to note here, though, is you need to uh, set the type of the script to something that's not JavaScript. If you say script slash JavaScript, or you just leave it out, um, it'll, the browser will interpret it by, as JavaScript by default. And that's bad because Arcade is not JavaScript. It's one of the most common misconceptions is that the JavaScript syntax that you're familiar with will be all be supported in Arcade, and that's not the case. You'll quickly find that out. And you definitely want your browser to just read it as a text string. Um, so you can say text plain. You can also get more creative and say type is Esri slash Arcade. So you see that in some of my examples. So let's go ahead and dive in to some examples to um, to see what how powerful you can um, make your apps using Arcade. So I'm going to switch back over to my browser. 
and um, use the same uh, service that Mohan was talking about um, to show uh, weather data. So we have a lot more than just temperature in that service. You may have seen other fields when he originally showed it, but as I zoom in, you'll see more information appear from my weather stations. Um, not just temperature, but the name of the station, the relative humidity, and also the w information about the wind. So this is actually a, a sample in our, in our documentation, and I'm opening it in the sandbox. So if you look over here to the left, you'll see that I've written an arcade expression, and I've given it this ID wind direction. And this one is all about the wind, of course. So I have a field that tells me the direction, and that's degrees from 0 to 360. And then I also have the wind speed. And so I want to give this information to the user in something that's digestible and easy to understand. If you tell them the wind direction is 170 degrees, it's going to be a little hard for most people to understand, oh, that wind is blowing towards mostly the south. So we can give them you, um, you know, letters such as south, southwest, northwest, and they understand those a lot easier. So I use the out-of-the-box when function arcade to evaluate what that compass direction would be. So um, my, what when does is it takes a series of expressions and then it returns a value when that given expression is true. So if the wind speed is zero, I don't want to indicate a direction at all because there's no wind. Um, but then I, I, I proceed to go kind of around the compass and say, okay, if it's less than 22 and a half, but greater than zero, or if it's greater than 337, I'm going to say the direction is pointing north and so on and so forth, northeast, east, all the way around the compass. And then I'm going to explicitly say, I want to return the speed in miles per hour um, at a given direction. And you can see that in the green text in the map. So um, in this particular feature, the wind is blowing at seven miles per hour towards the south. And so that's just a, an easy way for someone to see what's going on. Um, if I move to an area where there isn't wind, you can see that it's saying zero miles per hour, and then there's no direction. That's where that first expression was uh, coming into play. So I referenced that with the ID wind direction, and you can see it referenced here. When I set up my label class, I just reference it using that variable name, and then um, set that on my, my label class. Let's take a look at some of these others. Humidity. Very similar to what Mohan showed. I'm just adding a percent with relative humidity. Um, the station name, all I'm doing is returning the value from the field, pretty straightforward. And then the temperature is doing exactly what Mohan did before, except I'm showing it in Fahrenheit here. So you can do some pretty cool things um, with Arcade. Very simple, um, just returning the, the field value or you can do these multi-line expressions to do something a little more complex. And again, when you have a service like weather that's updated every five minutes, it's not practical to run a script to update the service to recalculate that value every five minutes. Um, you either need to reconfigure the service so it returns the value you want, or you set up an arcade expression to do it on, for you on the client. Let's look at this next example. I'm taking the same data um, but now I'm using the visualization profile. What I'm doing is showing the difference between the apparent temperature and the air temperature. Basically, this is the, if you're familiar with you know, um, weather data where people or websites will say this is what the temperature actually is versus what it feels like. This is the same concept. Um, so this is live data and I wanted to measure what that difference is. So is it actually, does it feel colder than it actually is? Or does it feel warmer? So you can see in most of the United States right now, it actually feels colder because of a wind chill um, versus South America, it feels a lot warmer because of humidity. So let's look at that expression. Here it is. This is actually pretty complicated because I have temperature, humidity, and wind speed values in my, in my service. I can create, um, I can calculate using um, the formula for um, wind chill and also the formula for uh, the heat index to uh, calculate what that apparent temperature is. So here's calculating wind chill. That's what the uh, 
formula is using temperature. And then um, there's this is the heat index. It uses a number of constants. And then by following the rules, it says if it's below 50 degrees and the wind speed is greater than three miles an hour, um, I'm going to return the wind chill um, subtracted by the temperature or the temperature my wind chill minus the temperature. And then similarly, the heat index minus the temperature when it follows a certain set of rules. And I can create um, that visualization. When I set up my renderer, I just need to be sure to reference that arcade expression and then set up my stops with the expected values. So if it's less than 10 degrees in difference, then I want to give it a very blue color. If, it's, if it actually feels 10 degrees warmer, then I want to give it a darker red or a bright red color. So you get that nice visualization. Um, here's another example where I have election data. It's not actually election data. This is um, the uh, numbers of people registered to a political party. Um, so I don't have a field that tells me which party is more common in a particular county. So I can actually use Arcade to uh, figure that out for me if I have those raw numbers. And so in order to find these patterns, I let's go to this tab, political parties. I write an expression up here to give me the winning party. So I refer to these fields, say, okay, this field is a Republican, number of Republicans, number of Democrats, number of independents. And then I'm going to use this arcade function called decode to match the maximum number between those three numbers to a particular string. So if the max is the Republican value, I'm going to return a Republican string. If it's Democrat, then so on and so forth. And inside my app, I reference that expression here called winner arcade. I put it inside the value expression property of my renderer. And then I set up the expected values in my unique value infos. So if it's a, if this expression returns Democrat, I want it to be blue, Republican, red, independent, yellow. And that's the visualization I get. But let's say I want to do something a little more and add opacity to indicate how strong the presence of each of those uh, parties is. I can do a very similar expression, except this time I'm just going to get the maximum value and divide it by the total. So whichever party wins in that particular county, I'll give it a stronger opaque value. Um, and if, it, if it's more contested, then I'll give it a a uh, more uh, transparent value. So transparent or contested meaning if it's about 33% of the population, then it's not a very strong presence of the party even if it wins. But if it's more than 44%, I'll give it a full, fully opaque color. So I'm gonna add that as an opacity visual variable and I'm gonna refresh my app and see how that changes my visualization. Let's see, I might have, oh, there we go. So you can see a pretty, uh, a, a, you get a, a much nicer look at the picture. You see that those, some of those counties in the South and in Appalachia are strongly democratic, um, whereas the independent counties in the Midwest are not as independent as you might think in the other visualization. Okay, let's move over to pop-ups. So we talked about feature sets. Let's say I have a layer of hotels and a layer of restaurants. Um, and when the user clicks on the hotel, they want to get the location of the closest restaurant. So in my restaurant layer, let's say I got this one, Sartaj restaurant. I believe these are all Indian places in London, by the way, <laughs> Mohan. So yeah. if you ever go to London, you can use this app. Um, so if, so this one is called, uh, is, that, is it Sartaj? Is that how you pronounce yeah, it? Sartage. And so if I click this hotel, I'd expect that one to be the closest. So you see hotel, this is the name, and this is the closest restaurant. That closest restaurant is not a field in my service. So what exactly am I doing to get that value? I'm using feature sets. So if I go to my pop-up template, um, sorry, this is the wrong one, closest restaurant, here we go. So this is a, a much larger expression. This is where those geospatial functions come into play. So I have um, set up a search distance of one, I believe, miles, but we'll, we'll see in a second. This is commented out. 
this is actually kind of hard to read, right? Because it's not um, formatted. So if I pretend like it's JavaScript for a second, I'll get default syntax hi highlighting. Here we go. So restaurants, this is a reference to the restaurants layer. So I'm saying dollar map, and then I pass in the title of that layer. Okay, so now I have a reference to that layer. Now I want to get all of the features that intersect that, all of the restaurants that intersect, um, sorry, all the restaurants that are within a one kilometer buffer of the feature that I click on, of the hotel. So this is how this looks. I pass in that restaurant feature set into an intersects fun function where I'm gonna to try to intersect those points with a buffer from my feature that's one kilometer. Okay, so that search distance comes from line 22. So I'm gonna do a buffer, one kilometer, do an intersect operation. That will execute a single query to the service of, um, to my restaurant service to see and, and return all the features that intersect that, that distance. And then I go through and iterate, I, I calculate the distance um, as I iterate through each of those, those listings. And when I find the distance, I'm just gonna see which one is closest based on the minimum, and then return that value in the pop-up. So closest restaurant is gonna be the name of that restaurant. So this value, um, after I've uh, iterated through it, um, it it looks like the it's just like a dollar feature, except I'm referring to a different feature. In this case, closes restaurant. And then if there's um, if there's information about opening hours or closing hours, I'll include that as well. So that is empty function is helpful for dynamically adding content to your pop up. So that's how you I was able to um, to get this information. Okay. For all those geo geeks out there, um, this is uh, an example of comparing the average of the neighbors with the clicked feature. So I'm looking at a map of the percentage of the population in Mexico that didn't complete any formal education. I wanna see how different a particular feature is from the others. So if I look at this visually, if I go into Oaxaca, I see this one is starkly different from this one. And when I click it, I can see, okay, this is the percentage of the population that didn't complete an education level. And I also want to compare it to the average of all the features that touch it or neighbor it. So I can see that that number is actually six percentage points above the average, meaning it's worse off than its neighboring features. So what exactly does that arcade look like? That's a little different. So here I'm getting the, uh, that value, the percentage of the feature that is of the population that's not in school. Here we go. And then I want to intersect, run an intersects operation um, on the layer in the map or of the same service against that feature. But I also want to do a filter for all, for basically to filter out the, the feature I'm using in the operation. So if it's object ID matches, I'm not gonna include it. And then I'm gonna calculate the average using the average function in Arcade, and then I'm gonna get the difference between the clicked feature and the neighboring feature's average, and that will tell me the points above or below. So you can do some pretty awesome uh, client-side calculations using the pop-up. Okay. Um, I'm not going to dive into the code on this one, but this is an example of floor area ratio. Um, what's cool about this example is that what it's doing is it's taking a buildings layer and a parcels layer, and it's going beyond just getting the geometry, but it's actually calculating the intersection of those two geometries. So if you see this, this black buildings layer, uh, what I'm doing is calculating the intersection of that building layer and the parcels layer, and then finding the ratio of that area with the area of the parcel and giving that to the pop-up. This is a value that's used in real estate applications. So beyond just finding the features that intersect, we can actually do like a cookie cutter intersect operation on that, which is pretty cool. And then um, this is a pretty common one where um, we have like a crime layer, so just points, and it's too dense to display in the map. 
but I have it there anyway, it's just not visible. And then I have census block groups. And so I want to calculate the number of crimes by type that intersect that, that polygon and then list them in order of, of most uh, prevalent to least. So narcotics wins in this particular area, followed by non-aggravated assaults and robberies. So that a very common you know, GIS scenario where you want to find the difference, or sorry, the, all the points that intersect a polygon. And so here we get all crimes. This is a reference to the crime layer. And then I want to just get a count of all the crimes. And then this is the crime rate. So this is actually um, um, a, not the exact same expression but it's just saying this is the total number of crimes at a certain rate. All right. So I also want to show really quickly, um, this is a sample in the SDK, very similar. It's finding the top three crimes and telling you how many offenses there were in each category and whether it was most commonly occurred at night. Um, so this is doing a more complicated group by statistical query within the expression. So I encourage you to go to the documentation of JavaScript API and search Arcade, and you'll see more information about how you can write an expression such as this one. And then this is the example of feature Z in the documentation. Um, you can actually write your expression here and say, this is, I want to do a set the Z values of these features based on um, the Z of the point, or you could actually just say the attribute. So if you know you had a feature uh, that had a height attribute, you could say dollar feature dot height, and then it would it would render that location properly. Since this uh, this field or this layer doesn't have that attribute, it's just going to place it on the ground. But this um, walkthrough is very helpful in explaining how that works and where you'd pass that expression on your layer. It's in the elevation info property. All right, um, just got a few minutes left. Um, but before we close up, I want to, uh, for, you know, perhaps show a couple of advanced use cases where you want to generate um, Arcade for your users. Uh, the basic scenario is, um, Let's say you know something about the data set, you want to normalize it. Um, they have a, a ability to explore your data set like by selecting fields, but when you render it, you want to normalize it or divide it by a certain field and cre create a percentage uh, value. You can generate Arcade um, within the JavaScript to allow you to do that. This is a scenario here in this snippet of generating a render using smart mapping, and you can create the arc Arcade expression on behalf of the user by referencing the selected field and then dividing it by a set normalization field. And then you pass that expression in the, uh, in the creator method of smart mapping in behalf of them. But, and so this is um, the example that I'm about to show you. So I wrote a generate Arcade expression. Basically what, um, what this does is it will take an array of fields that are similar, and then it will normalize them by a known normalization field um, that's also prior to those functions. So when you have a string, I want to um, add all those values together, divide it by the normalization, multiply by 100 to get a nice percentage, and then round that value. Um, so we actually do this. Um, in the smart mapping process. Um, not that particular case, but we have a number of renders such as our age render, Mohan touched on that a little bit. We also have a relationship render and a predominance render where when you give a certain set of parameters such as the layer and the attributes, the creator method will generate the arcade expression for you and then um, execute that arcade to, to query stats and then you know, pick the color scheme based on the base map and construct a render for you that you can then um, set back on your input layer. But let me walk you through really quickly what uh, the power of generating arcade. So in this particular case, I um, am generating an, a render using a smart mapping module. And all I'm doing is normalizing 
um, two values. So if I go here, my render params, I'm saying, okay, I have a layer and I have a view, and I want to um, dis I want to create a render for my field that indicates the population that did not go to school, and I, and I want to normalize it by this value. That's what you, that's how you would hard code it, and then you get a render back and you set it back on your layer, as you see there. And then you know you can set up a slider. This allows the user to explore the data and and have fun with it. Uh, you can take that a step further with Arcade because if I go back to that legend before, it's a little hard to read. It's just using the field aliases saying, you know, population without education divided by population with education or the total population. And then you got these ratio values. It's not very easy to read. You can use Arcade to give you um, proper percentages by normalizing it in the Arcade itself. So they can, when they explore this data, they get values that are more easy to read. And all that you have to do there is just hard code that arcade expression right here in your parameters. So I'm just saying dollar feature field value divided by dollar feature normalization field multiplied by 100. Exact same code, same process. But what if you want to give them something more, like allow them to explore different brackets? So um, in their education. So I do that here. In this case, let me close the dev tools for now. Um, I allow them to say, okay, I want to see the percentage of the population that didn't complete school, but what about those that just completed primary school? So it will generate that new renderer. They can update their slider, play with it. Maybe those that completed high school, and then you see new patterns emerge. But these values aren't necessarily just there in my service. What I'm actually doing is generating the arcade for them. So I have a generate renderer method, this get value expression, which will generate an arcade expression. This is really where the meat of this happens. You already saw this snippet. And so what I'm doing is I'm passing in a set of fields um, and so there's 16 different fields that indicate different education levels. I have people who started primary school but didn't finish, those that did finish primary school but didn't go on to um, secondary school, um, those that completed a bachelor's degree, that completed an associate's and master's, all sorts of different levels, but I want to condense it into five, um, kind of aggregate them into five different categories. And so that's what this function is for. It will create the arcade expression um, and then um, pass that to the smart mapping method. So if I open up my dev tools again, you can see that arcade expression logged to my console. So if I say secondary school, these two fields summed together, normalized, indicate the percentage of the people that finished secondary school. So this is those that finished but didn't go to high school, those that finished and did some high school. And then completed a university degree. It's a little longer because I have all the degree levels and then normalized. So you can do some pretty cool things um, using Arcade and the JavaScript API. Now, um, to sum up, um, some of you may think, okay, well, you've been using the same expression. Um, there are probably other common expressions out there. Um, how can I get access to some of these. Well, we've actually set up a sharing repo for, um, for uh, that allows users to submit expressions that they feel will be useful to others. And you can also go there and browse and find expressions that are already written for your use case. And I'll show you that in a bit. And what does the future hold for Arcade? Um, Basically, we listen to your feedback all the time, and we want to identify common operations and use cases. So you need to let us know what you need. You can reach out to us on GeoNet, on Twitter, um, on our feedback page in the Arcade documentation. Tell us if you have a new use case, a profile you want added, perhaps new functions or globals, um, and, we'll, and we'll consider that. Uh, let me tell you what we already have kind of in the works and what's what we're looking at going forward based on your feedback. 
Uh, right now, we're working on adding support for string literal templates to make the expressions a little easier to write. You may have seen some awkward string concatenation in some of my examples. Well, that will make your, your expressions much easier to read. Then we're gonna add support also for bitwise operators and also metadata, metadata functions when working with feature sets. Feature sets. Also some research projects that we have kind of on deck are the ability to import expressions uh, or functions that you write yourself. So you're not, basically right now you're required to copy and paste your, your functions that you write um, between expressions. They're all uh, unique. So this would allow you to write your expression in one place and then import it from um, into wherever you want to use it. Um, projection support, the ability to request um, data from the web, and also um, internationalization support, and then all, and then expanding the pop-up profile to return dictionaries and lists for um, easier use with, with tabular data. So those are some of the things that are on deck. And here are some of the resources I'm gonna show you. There's the documentation that Mohan showed you, the playground that he, um, that he demoed as well. And also um, we have blogs, and, and um, helpful guide pages. And I'm gonna just show you really quick before we close. Um, here is that Arcade Expression sharing repo. You just go to github.com slash Esri uh, slash arcade hyphen expressions. And then you can go in here and just follow the readme instructions and it will point you to um, where you, um, to the expression templates that you can follow. You basically just go to the proper folder say I want to get the, like this one looks like something I'd want to use, and then you, you copy and paste what's there and replace it with your field values. This guide in the JavaScript documentation, you just click guide and it's the first option under reference. Extremely helpful, I highly recommend you read through it. We have, uh, if you look at this menu off to the right, um, a section on profiles where we break up all the profiles that you have available to you. You just click on that one and then you can see examples as links to samples and documentation, um, including ones that you saw in this session here. And also I encourage you to check out the ArcGIS blog. So it's at esri.com slash ArcGIS hyphen blog. And then if you search for the Arcade Expressions tag, you see a wealth of information here from not only myself and others on the team, but also others who work um, for the Living Atlas team and ArcGIS Online who have written extensive, comprehensive blog posts on how to use Arcade. And the last note, I want to point you to resources for this session. So if you go to my GitHub uh, account at echinus slash conferences slash DS2020 slash Arcade, you'll have links to all of the samples that you saw today in this session, as well as the slide deck that I um, used, Mohan and myself, um, you can download those and to revisit the links that we saw here. And with that being said, I'd like to thank you for tuning in, watching this video. Again, I apologize that we couldn't meet in person. Um, maybe next year we'll be there, Mohan and myself, and we'll be able to answer your questions. And if you do have questions about this session, please log on to GeoNet and and post them there and we'll be more than happy to to answer your questions so thank you for watching